Welcome back, everybody, to the Birdies and Bourbon Show. We are super stoked today. Uh, we can't wait to have this conversation. Let me tell you, she's Kentucky's first female master distiller, consultant, apprentice ring maiden, dream catcher, <laughs> magic maker, and she is on her journey discovering that the universe is equal parts mathematics, magnetic, and magic. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only... <laughs> Marianne Eves. Marianne, <laughs> cheers. How you doing? Cheers. Doing great, Cal. How are you? Mm. Oh, big sip. <laughs> couldn't, 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 be, couldn't be better. Well, we need to get loosened up for the show, you know? Oh, I, I love your glass, by the way. It looks uh, looking a little similar there. So um, we, we didn't have that question written down, but we're definitely going to talk glasses in a few minutes. So, uh, so where, do, where does our podcast find Marianne Eves at today? Uh, I'm in Redmond, Oregon. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yep. Yep, yeah. just, just hanging out here at the fairgrounds. My my partner owns a circus, so we're uh, we've got his little tent set up, doing some live stream circus shows, and and I'm just you know consulting on the road. And uh, I have a client in in California that will be visiting here in a couple of weeks. Oh, well, cool! So it's like uh, you're at the circus, you're on a circus right now. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> just circus all around. So awesome! Life is a circus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got I, that. I was, I was telling Cal she's coming on because we are a circus. I mean, I, I think we should take offense to this, Cal. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> no, 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 feel no, right at home. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no offense taken for sure. So, uh, so as everybody can see, uh, the for the folks that are just listening, we do have uh, Sweetens Cove. Um, I've got to get this name right, and I do want to ask you about this. So it's Tennessee Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Uh, I have cracked into this. Uh, actually, I was up at Sweetens Cove a couple of weeks ago and played. So Adamski and all those guys up there, they're doing a fantastic job at the golf course. So before we get into the liquor... <laughs> Uh, what'd you shoot up there? <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't been, I'm ashamed to say I haven't been to the golf course yet. It was my intention to go um, that, that first week that I was in Tennessee doing the initial um, tasting through all the hundred barrels. Um, but they had a, a, something going on at the, the distillery, which got me behind in my sampling. And unfortunately, the, the thing that got cut was my field trip to the, the golf course. So oh, yeah. I haven't been yet, and then you know, COVID. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's uh, the the course isn't going anywhere, so I'm sure uh, you know once once we get back to whatever normal is going to look like, uh, mm. I'm sure you're going to find yourself uh, up and down the 75 corridor there. So uh, it'll, it'll be a quick stop. And let, let let us know when you're there. We'll, uh, we'll tag along for a round. Get get in a quick <laughs> nine. <laughs> and they are doing great, Marion. I don't know if you know we we had uh, Matt on. It must have been Cal. What like you know three four weeks ago? They're sold out like on the weekends through the end of the year, and it's just crazy what's going on up there. Yeah. So Marianne, congratulations! You've officially sold the golf course out until twenty twenty two. Hey, fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I can do to help. <laughs> right. Hey. So so let's get into this a little bit. We're going to be drinking kind of as we uh, kind of uh, open this up. But uh, you want to drop maybe some tasting notes? Uh, how should we be sipping for people that may have picked up Sweetens Cove at the liquor store? Or maybe they bought it online. Um, if they're kind of going through this and listening and drinking along the way, we'll probably talk about some, uh, some nose notes and tasting notes and finishing. But you want to share some with our listeners about what they should be experiencing? Well, the the fun part, one of the fun parts about Sweetens Cove is that I made five different batches, um, but you won't really be able to tell from the bottle. It's all the same label, the same colors, the same everything. The only small difference is is in the proof level. So um, if you all have a 101 proof 101 ish proof that's the uh, that's number one uh, 103.7 is is batch two um they're getting ready to bottle batch three right now so i'm not sure what the proof on that one the final proof on that one's going to be but each each batch up into batch five is going to be a little bit of a different proof so if you're listening today and then you end up with a different batch just listen you know to your palate that's the fun thing about uh drinking bourbon it's uh, a little bit of discovery and just you know relaxing with, with some excellent juice so I think, you know, the, this first batch in particular, I was excited to release uh, first because of the, of the balance. So for me, you know, it's got this nice sweet nose. It's very approachable. You know, it's 101, but it, I don't think that it drinks that that warm. Um right. 
It's got this nice kind of round palette. Something that's very important to me as a blender is to create a, a very balanced experience. I don't want something that's real, you know, spice up front and then you you fall off the back or, you know, it, it's it's just sweet all the way through and you kind of feel like you're chewing on it and you're, you're not getting anything else. And for these 13 year old barrels, you know, it's something to, that I was a little bit worried about was the oak uh, levels. I'm like, gosh, these are just going to be oak bombs. And I'm not really even sure what to do if they're just all oak uh, all the way through. Um, but the variation from barrel to barrel between these hundred w- was really interesting and, and they were really fun to work with. So you'll get some fruit notes, some spice notes, some floral notes, uh, sweet and spicy notes, all, all, uh, all in your um, palate at different times in this, uh, this first batch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know, I'm I'm pretty. Uh, I don't know. Dan Dan may make fun of me. I'm uh, I'm I'm very simple in in some uh, some instances, and and I usually you know it's uh, and you're right. I mean, there's lots of unique flavors going in here. This definitely does not drink like a 101. So if somebody sees it on the shelf and they're like, oh, 100 proof, I don't know if I can handle that. Uh, you, you, I'm not getting that. Um, uh, you know, off-putting, you know, heat or ethanol from this thing at all. Any anywhere through it, you know, nose to finish. And, you know, I think one of the, uh, I, I like to give things like a, a label. So I, I go through the tasting notes of where I'm at, but I like to kind of focus on if I only had one thing to describe it, uh, I try to get one thing and, and, you know, where I'm at. And I don't know if it's too early and we'll, we'll, we'll move on to other things in a minute. So, uh, but you know what I get, I get, um, I get German chocolate cake in this thing. Mm-hmm. If I had to describe it as one uh, you know, one item that I get and it's, you know, think about the chocolate, the vanilla, the coconut, and I, and it's kind of wrapping that up. And if you put it in a, you know, one package with a little bow, that's where I, that's where I wind up with this one. <laughs> Can't be mad about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How could you? So you, you touched on something and, uh, if, if, hold, if on, hold on, John, hold on, hold on. Oh yeah. Sorry. I get a ton of coconut in it. And I was going to ask Marianne, where did you get the coconut? Where is it coming from? <laughs> <laughs> that coconut comes from the barrel, which is interesting because it doesn't always come through. So, it, you know, it, it's uh, it's probably something uh, to do with the treatment of these barrels. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure what that was because, you know, I, I got to the barrels after they had already been produced and aged for 13 years. So I really don't have that insight. But typically that coconut note, it's either from um, the malt or the barrel. Likely mm-hmm. this case, it's the barrel. Cool. That's great. Uh, right. So if you were, yeah, so you mentioned, uh, you were talking about blending earlier and, and I don't know if you can share, I, I haven't heard or seen you talk about this at all, but if you had to describe your blending style, uh, how, how would you frame that up? I mean, what, what, what does, you know, if I said, Hey, you know, I want to follow in the footsteps and, and I, I, I did listen to you on a few other, uh, uh, outlets and you were talking you know, people have been contacting you. Hey, how do I, how do I tag along? How do I become your prodigy? Right. So, uh, what, what is the Marianne Eve's blending style? I think my approach is definitely more in depth than, than most blenders for large brands, because, you know, if you're putting a thousand barrels into a batch there, it, it's just, uh, impossible to think that you could taste every single barrel and in in you know whatever warehouse of 50 or 80 or you know however many thousands of barrels that that you have resting ready to go at the same time um so you know my approach in this particular product was that it's it's so you know small scale um that i can go to that level of depth that i can taste every single barrel twice to make sure that i i understand its personality. Um, if there are any um, aspects of it that I really want to um, pay attention to, whether it's in a really positive way, like this one is a single barrel, we can't touch it for any of the blends. Or this one, you know, it's got this um, hot, spicy spike right there in the middle of the palate. I want to make sure that if it does come through, that it's balanced by other things um, that I add to the blend. So I, I think mine is, uh, it's a thoughtful blending process and, and maybe a little bit um, obsessive <laughs> about flavor um, because I, I, I just want to know every single barrel before I start throwing them together. Cool. Very cool. What, uh, so what is you, what, uh, what did logic did you use in terms of like, this one's a single barrel. We're going to leave that one alone until we're going to do that release. 
Basically, it was just like if I get a really interesting experience on its own, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't need anything else added to it. it, it it's a uh, you know a, st- a star all in its own right. So the four barrels uh, out of this hundred barrel lot that I, I selected, I pulled out to be single barrels. I felt like you know had some really interesting, uh, unique notes, uh, but also it was like this has got the long finish. It's got the creamy mouthfeel. It's got you know all these things that I that I look for to use barrels together to make into a blend um, with, you know, just, just all on its own. Oh, cool. Very good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying the other uh, the others. So you've had the others, obviously, right? <laughs> I so I, I haven't well, had the final. Them, so, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't had the final batches. So what I what I did to create them was take um, you know samples of all 100 barrels and I would put them together in equal proportions. But we all know. Um, each barrel is going to have different contents and be at different proof levels when they dump it at the end of the day. So it's not an exact science. Um, for this next round of blending for Sweetens Cove, I've actually asked, asked them uh, to weigh every barrel for me. So I not only have a sample, but I also have an idea of how full the barrel is. So I can factor that in. So it's going to be a little bit more precise. It's a um, a product and a process that, that I haven't seen on the the market yet so I'm, I'm really excited to to dig into it but I wanted it to be um, a little more precise than this this first go around because I, I got the you know overarching flavor notes with this equal um, part mixture of, of each one of these you know there was 20 or 18 or 19 barrels um, but because of the differences in the actual barrel, the final product may, may be a, a little bit of a different animal. So I know, you know, generally what the flavors are going to be and what I, how I hope that they turn out. Um, but actually, this first one um, is, is maybe even a little bit better in the, the final batch as opposed to the, the samples. And the same with, uh, with batch two came out a little bit more balanced and, and uh, had some, some different notes in the, the final batch. Cause the way that I assembled it, it was a little bit more Oak dominant. I was like, all right, out of the five batches, this batch number two is the one that really sings the homage of the 13 years, but it came out a little softer and, and not quite so Oak dominant, which, which is, is good. I think in, yeah, in yeah, the, sure. the final batch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, depending on your palate, right. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, everybody can, and depending on the day, I mean, is it, uh, you know, is it going to be, is it taste today? Like what it's going to taste like tomorrow, which is a question that I had. So when I first cracked uh, the sweetens open and, and I think, which is true with every bottle, right. So once you give it some air, it's going to change a little bit and, you know, through, through the blending process, I mean, is that thought pattern kind of going through your head and okay, <laughs> we're, we're going to, we're going to crack the bottle and we're going to get the initial pour. And then this is what it, re- so it, I mean, it, I don't know if I'm being clear, but is, is it the first pour you're going after or is it after it's had some air on it or is it a combination of all? Um, it, for, for me, it's, um, it's what's the, what's the consumer's first experience going to be like. Okay. Um, but it should, you know, stand up over time too. So yeah, sure. Not going to change in a, in a bad way. Um, I find that for myself personally and in my palate, when I'm going through and, and doing tastings, I have to trust that first round through. Um, cause if I come back, I'm going to get different notes and, and it's yeah. just going to keep changing. <laughs> Right. Like when I would do, um, you know, a, a, a triangle test, um, they would have a series set up back when I was being trained as a taster way back when at, at Brown Foreman, um, we would have a series of five or six triangle tests and, and I would go through a nose and see if I could identify the difference with just my nose. And typically I could, if I had to go back and taste, um, my first kind of, um, inkling that it was different. Um, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to taste this six times and, and analyze it six times and, and get different answers. I'm going to trust my gut. And, and typically um, that, that, uh, that proved to be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <clears throat> yeah. But uh, so, you know, just to go to back to this and uh, you know, it's uh, the, 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 well, the, the first pour, you know, I was, uh, I was excited about it. Uh, it was good uh, now and I haven't had it since, uh, but I'm the second pour to me is uh, it's, uh, it's, it was better than the, fir- the, in, the, the initial pour. So, which is, Fantastic. uh, yeah, good, good thing. So yeah, good, uh, good juice here. 
I cracked mine today, so I'll, I'll let you have to let you know about the second one. <laughs> okay. How so, long do you stay with each barrel, Marion? Like when you're testing them? About 15 minutes. I like to spend with, with each barrel. So I go and I'll nose it first and then I'll come back in and taste it at cask strength. And then I'll add a little bit of water and come back through and, and taste it with a little bit of water, knock it back. This is not, um, really precise, the water addition, uh, because I've already got all the notes from the, the cast strength, uh, tasting. It's mm -hmm. basically just to get some of the alcohol out of the way. So I can see if there are any defects that I didn't notice at first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, so what's, uh, I don't know. Anything else about Sweetens Cove you want to share? I'm just really excited about this release, how well it's been received, um, how how tasty these final batches are coming out, and um, how excited I am for the the next release. It's uh, uh, I don't want to share too much, but but I'm I'm really excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm wondering if Tom Brady called you yet. So uh, for the for <laughs> folks that are listening, I'm sure everybody knows. You know, Peyton Manning is a partner at uh, at Sweetens Cove. Uh, he he officially. Um, uh, anointed Marianne as the quarterback. So, uh, you know, cheers to you. Thank you. And, uh, so yeah, so I'm wondering when Tom's going to, uh, get his bourbon started. I mean, he's got to get a golf course <laughs> now. He's got to get a bourbon going. So I'm expecting the phone to start ringing for you. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know if he does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, more in common than you'd know, I was born in East Tennessee also, uh, tri cities area. Uh, I'm also, uh, I'm a self-appointed master taster. I guess maybe I'm more of a master <laughs> drinker than I am a taster, but, uh, uh, so, so being from East Tennessee, you know, I do have a fondness and I, I know you're in a recreational vehicle, but I have a fondness for trailers. I can't lie. I moved to Atlanta and I, I got the closest thing I could find. I couldn't find any double wides down here. So I had to get a double stack trailer. So it's an old uh, candy factory, you know, but it's the equivalent of a double wide trailer to just one on top of each other. Uh, so what kind of RV are you traveling around in? <laughs> well, we're actually getting ready to, to upgrade. I think we've got this 28 foot travel trailer right now. And um, Andy is getting bigger and bigger every day and she's going to need her own space sooner than later. So we're looking for um, something that's a little bit larger. So looking at um, a momentum toy hauler right now. So that oh. might be our next move. Oh, I was expecting an Airstream. I, I was oh, expecting yeah. <laughs> vintage. Yeah. Like overhauled. And, uh... <laughs> I love the idea of it. It's very romantic. But my partner is six four, so he would be just walking uh, around his head cranked. Over. <laughs> <laughs> Those showers are impossibly tiny. <laughs> yeah. Spe speaking of Andy, Dan, I know you had a question for. Her. Uh, well, I was I was going to ask her what her favorite movie was, if that's where you're going. <laughs> yeah, that's where I was going. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? If the I little one. Uh, what no, her favorite movie is, or favorite. what my oh yeah. my favorite movie. Um. For a long time, it was Fifth Element. I don't know what that says about me, but I love the the sci fi, and I had a, with, a crush with, on uh, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis, yeah, okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> Very cool. Well, we were wondering, so where did the name Andy come from? Andy, it's uh, it's funny. So I have always liked the idea of boys' names for girls, and I was telling Kevin that, and he just kind of came up with Andy. There is there's a um, he he's tall and thin and with dark hair. So he sometimes people will say that he looks like Woody from Toy Story. Okay. <laughs> and the sweetest thing that he said, which he didn't tell me before we actually named her, is that you know a Andy is Woody's kid. Yeah. And so everything, his whole purpose in life is to bring joy to Andy and be you know that that's his whole reason. So that's Kevin's whole reason is is Andy. So I thought that was really sweet. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> she, you know, she answered. No, yeah, I, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So back into, uh, back into what you're doing right now. So how does one find you? And how do I say uh, we're looking on, we're looking to make a bourbon or a whiskey or, or, or maybe, a, a, I mean, you're doing great stuff with Jen or have done great stuff with Jen. I don't know if you're still doing anything on the Jen side. Uh, that's uh, we we typically like to ask people, are you a G and T or V and T person? But we already know the answer for yes. you. Uh, <laughs> you. If you, you want if you want to make it official, you can. We don't want to speak for you, but uh, we were going with the former. So, 
Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I really, really enjoyed creating that gin recipe for Castle and Key, and I would love uh, to do it again. My um, brandy client in California that's out here on, on this side of the, the, uh, the nation, she has this idea of doing an Indian herb uh, infusion for the, uh, this grape uh, based gin. It's going to be a Chardonnay based gin. Um, but I'm really excited to, to get go back and up and going on that recipe um, sometime soon. It's going to be more um, uh, based in like uh, culinary flavors, you know, whereas the gin that I created for, for Castle and Key was much more kind of traditional, um, very rooted in Kentucky and what herbs actually grow there. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping for a, a couple opportunities uh, to do some new gin recipes, but I, you know, I, I love it. It's so creative, even, even more creative uh, to me than, than brown spirits. You just have this whole universe of, of herbs that you can infuse in, into a gin. Um, but I'm also, you know, I love whiskey and, and that's why my, my number one passion. Mm -hmm. um, you asked how people can get a hold of me. So I have a website, it's marianneves.com. Um, or I'm on, on social media too. You know, folks can, can message me through Instagram or Facebook. It's Marianne BMD bourbon master distiller. Yeah. Awesome. So, so what's the, uh, so you wound up in Oregon and you got, uh, you've got a virtual circus going on, but was <laughs> the, was, was the intent though? I mean, did you go to, uh, the West Coast with the intent to work? I mean, was that, uh, you know, with uh, particular wineries or did you kind of, uh, are you freelancing going, uh, you know, we're going to find people that want to work with me? Well, I, I would love to find people along the way. Absolutely. Um, but I've, I've had this client in, in California for almost, no, nope, um, like seven, eight, eight months now. Okay. So we've, we've had a, a long relationship. So uh, I, I went there first to do our, our first kind of run of uh, gin botanicals and distillation in December of last year. And then Andy came along in March and, uh, you know, we, we thought that we would connect sooner than, than we have, but COVID really kind of, um, slowed the, the circus train down. And, it slowed and everybody's <laughs> circus train down. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's just, you know, getting, getting back into the swing of things a little bit, uh, later in the year than, than we had anticipated, but it's, it's, it's good actually, because there's some other opportunities that are evolving, um, for me personally, and, and also for this, uh, this project out, out there. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so what is like, uh, what, what is a cocktail like a, so, you know, take the wine barrel and a, a, a barrel aged cock, gin cocktail in a wine barrel. How does that hold up? And it, it, is there anything to that? Or maybe I'm getting too far ahead of myself and you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, you, have you ever had a gin old fashioned? Nope, not I, me. I, 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 well, I, I will as soon as we hang up. <laughs> I, was good. I have not. Gin, yeah, gin actually makes an excellent old fashioned. So that's the first place my mind went. I was like, mm, barrel aged gin old fashioned sounds pretty fantastic. So I, I could see that being really delicious. Yeah. Huh. And and is the, uh, are the you know, I, I know that uh, some of the winemakers out there, the, uh, the farmers are having some challenging times mm -hmm. right now with just the fires and such, right? So you're probably going to wind up with uh, some product that's not, uh, suitable or palatable for wine. So definitely, uh, it's like a, you know, almost like a, a, I don't, peated wouldn't be the right word, but you wind up with a smoky, almost uh scotchy kind of gin ish maybe <laughs> or brandy you know that that's really why we first uh, started working together is because her name is Lindsay Lindsay hoops um, she had all of this wine basically the entire crop of Cabernet from 2017 that had been smoked um, out in, oh, really? in the vines and so when they made wine out of it um, they they just didn't feel like it it met the standards to go into a bottle with their hoops label on it but you know it's good product it's great grapes and to me you know a, a smoky base for a brandy sounds pretty freaking delicious. So. That does, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can think of a few things that mix up with that. Yeah, for sure. Right. So, so your uh, so cocktails. Uh, you know, we can. I mean, we can sit around and drink straight liquor all night, but it's. Uh, but it's. I mean, where's the experimentation in that? Unless you're making it yourself. Uh, so, what's your thoughts on uh, like wh where do you go for cocktails? What's your go to, and uh, what do you like on a creative side? Where would you start to venture out to? 
<laughs> well, we, you know, we talked about the, the smoked um, spirits. I love a smoked cocktail and I, I would not consider myself a mixologist in the least. Um, I love trying different flavor combinations. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm not a very successful home bartender, but I love, you know, talking to real uh, bar chefs and mixologists about what they do and their different techniques because um, it just seems to um, bring everything together in, in unique ways, emphasize different things at different points in, in the experience of the cocktail, um, especially if there's ice in it and as that dilutes. And it's just, it's, it's really fascinating, the, the science of the experience you have when you're drinking a cocktail. Very cool. So that hoops, is that right there next to Yountville? It is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. There's the Del Dotto cave right, yeah. right there at the yes. end of the road. That's a cool cave. That's a fun. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're ever, I mean, I'm sure you've done it, but, yeah. uh, but what an awesome experience down there with, uh, you know, pulling it straight out of the barrel. And that's, uh, that, that's one of the probably most interesting. I mean, it's like, oh, we're going to another winery. Okay. Well, I know what's happening. I just want to go drink. Uh, the Del Dotto is one of those, like, uh, life changing might be a bit much, but it is, <laughs> it is unique and it's uh, just in the setting and the environment. It's, it's what it, it's definitely worthwhile. I love that experience. So. I love downtown Yountville for like culinary. It's hard yes. to do. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Tons of stuff going on there for sure. I'm sure you want to get back. I was looking at some pictures online. I was like, man, whew, it'd, be keep it'd be tough to keep me away from there for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, so they, they have their home farm and vineyard, and then they just opened this new part of it called the Hoops Oasis, which is awesome. And i um, looking for other ways to expand here in the next year or so. So it's, it's, it's really exciting for them. You know, they, they, ha they have overcome many challenges in their, um, sh you know, life lifespan um, mm -hmm. but Lindsay is is really gritty and and uh ingenuitive and uh she's gonna she's gonna keep pushing forward and and uh, making these unique uh experiences and and expanding their portfolio and and um and keep it alive so is the, is the brand you were making a brandy for them right Mm -hmm. Brandy, um, maybe a vermouth, and and probably a gin. Hmm. Or any. So, uh, which one's going to come out first, or can you say, or do you know when? Likely, I mean, vermouth is really fast, so we'll we'll okay. just take um, the some distilled rosé brandy and use some of their rosé wine, infuse that with the botanicals, and then um, fortify that mixture with the rosé brandy. I'm 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 doing some experimentation with aging the rosé brandy in different barrels, and then um, combining that mixture, and then aging it some more in a different oh, wow. barrel after um, before we actually put it into a bottle. Of course we we have tried it with just you know the unaged brandy infusion and 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 what that tastes like and it's delicious mm -hmm. um it's it's really interesting to me i i i hadn't had much experience distilling grape based um you know this uh any anything fermented from grapes sure. um so w when i went down there the first time we had the cabernet and some bread blends and this chardonnay and the rosé and those flavors of the wine come through really um really well in the distillate it's uh you know it's just concentrated rosé or 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 right. cabernet it's, it's it's really really interesting and really exciting that's so cool yeah, that's that's fun, and you're, you're probably getting a chance to see. I know you you've talked about this before, and that was like Cal said. But you know, from the the full process, from you know the grains or whatnot, seeing the grapes or whatnot, you probably how interested are you in, in in getting involved in that earlier part of the process with regards to the grains or the grapes or whatnot? That is one of the things that I I love most about the industry is um, that the, being creative and and creating new new recipes from scratch, from the get-go. So I've got a couple projects, um, one in particular right now that I'm super excited about, which gives me the opportunity to do all of that from, from scratch. You know, oh, they, wow. they've, um, they purchased some equipment and they, they kind of know, you know, what direction they want to go 
very broadly with their their product portfolio, um, but they have no idea about the the nuances of the flavor and, and any of that. So so basically, they're just like, okay, the first thing that we want to do is drink with you, and and understand you know what what's possible, what we can make. We'll decide what we like. We'll listen. You know, we want to know what what you think we should do, and and then we'll just move forward from there. So, I you know being um, a research um, process research and engineer with Brown Foreman. That was basically my job was creating new recipes. So every month they would make me go out into the pilot plant, use the little um, mini replica Woodford Reserve pot stills and make make it at least, you know, a couple barrels of something unique every month. So I made some really interesting things that we'll probably never see the light of day, but it, it's just, you know, it's so much fun to to try. Wow. That's so, fun. so, so what turns out to be, and I don't know if it's, uh, if I could ask for a percentage or you can ballpark it or you can say, I'm not answering, but when, <laughs> when, when you're experimenting like that and you know, so you, you, you're whipping up 10 recipes of the 10, um, uh, like what's the percentage that's going to actually turn out and, and you've actually got a mature product. Um, well, it 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 kind of just depends on what the goal is. So, for example, um, going to the process of of creating a recipe for for Castle and Key. So, essentially, you know, I had this inspiration of this historic brand, um, the Old Taylor Distillery, and what Colonel Taylor was producing at that distillery. Sure. Um, but also, you know, wanting to do something different, put my own mark on it. So it just depends, you know, with the way that I'm working now as a consultant, I, I you know, it's a little bit of a, um, a balance, you know, taking it into consideration what the, um, owner of the brand uh, has in mind what their strategy will be and the way that they're going to market it. Um, and also taking my experience and, and what will make a, a successful, you know, tasty product. So sure. if somebody says, you know, I, I, I have decided that we're going to grow our grain here um, and I'll, I'll say, well, does anybody grow that grain there? And they're like, no, I don't know of anybody that does. And I'm like, there's <laughs> probably a reason why. <laughs> Generally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, it's just, um, managing those those dreams and expectations and and coming out with a, a product that that will be successful so uh, like at castle and key I, I don't know how many um dozens of of different you know grain um percentages ratios that i tried but then you know once i had kind of a a, a ratio decided then i went to actually like look at different sources of grain and then that would change things slightly um if i use this strain of corn it it would be you know better in this ratio versus that one and you know it it's uh it's definitely a big process yeah is, is it a challenge when you are the blender and not the distiller well challenge may not be fair but you know, you know <laughs> what my question is right i mean is there i mean is it is it like is it is it easier if you're distilling and then you're also blending versus uh you know you've got one or the other I would say absolutely. If I'm um, creating the recipes and um, determining the the flavors of the the distillate before it goes into the barrel, and then I'm actually also choosing the barrels that it goes into, um, and I can monitor it along the way, um, then I have a, a much better idea of you know what what the possibilities are, what um, you know what with different products I, I will be able to to produce and, and put together. But it's fun, you know, when you you get some barrels that you know you're just tasting for the first time you're like ooh, this is different what what can I do with this one mm -hmm. uh just like you know with the Sweetens Cove I had a hundred barrels and I had you know some thoughts of what they might taste like before I got my hands on them and they completely blew me away um it was going to be a good product whether they just dumped all of them together in one tank or or you know or or went through the the extent of what we did doing that this hand blending process but I I you know I really enjoyed the the thought of, you know, going into a warehouse that I've never been in before with a drill in hand and, and just go in there and start tasting things. And what, what in the world can I make with, with this stuff? So maybe there's some of that in my future. Cool. Very cool. Dro dropping notes already. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> MarianneEves.com. There you, there you go. Exactly. Uh, so, so you've spent, uh, I'm sure you're a wine drinker, uh, and, and obviously hoops, uh, you're enjoying their juice. Um, uh, we, we won't pin you down to one, 
But if I'm, uh, and Dan and I have both been out uh, several times, uh, California. I haven't been to Oregon yet, oddly enough. I haven't uh, either. Uh, but, well, I've been. I just haven't been to Wine- Willamette. But, uh, and I've been to Washington. But if I'm going to California and, uh, it's a, and I say, hey, Marianne, give me three must visits. What, what, are, what are my three must visits? What, what are you going to tell me? Crocker and Star. Um, oh, shoot. It's okay if you can't come Thomas, up So Thomas River Brown is a, a winemaker, but I, I can't for, I, I'm forgetting now the, the name of his um, primary brand. He actually produces a wine for a good friend of mine called Post Parade, which is excellent. Um, one of them, one of the wines in his, you know, arsenal, um, but I forget the name of his um, his main like home base. Um, hoops, of course, has got to be on the list. Crocker and Star. And okay, then, then you got to give us four. Okay, <laughs> no, then there, no. there's one that's um, up in the hills. It's the most beautiful setting, and they had this really, really interesting Chardonnay. Is it the uh, castle? No, it's not the castle. It's not a castle. Um. I was about to say we're on to something here if it was. Uh, <laughs> what was that place called? Oh my God. I can't I can't believe that I forgot it because it was just such a wonderful experience. We had a, a one-on-one tasting with this um uh expert and then the winemaker came out and, and chatted with us and and it was just this beautiful um beautiful and that's product. called and for those listening, that's called a teaser. Uh we'll let you yeah. know when we're coming back up. <laughs> Shoot, I can't believe I, I don't the remember that. It was up, you know, it like was What do they call it? it? It's not on the valley floor. It was up on, on one of the, the hills. Like a hell mountain or a spring mountain or one of those probably, yeah. Like yeah. a diamond mountain. Well, when you think of it, drop me a yeah. note. Because, well, actually, don't drop me a note. We'll just talk about the next <laughs> time you're coming on and uh, okay, we'll, okay. We'll, we'll revisit. Yeah. Uh, so what, what have we missed? I, I would, let's go back into this suite. And so if you're listening, uh, you didn't see me just report, but I did. And so that you said that you enjoyed the first, the one Oh one better than the second. Did I catch that correctly? Or did I, uh, well, I was really excited, you know, to, to release the, um, the first batch first, because I felt like it was of, of, um, across the five, it presented the most balanced experience and, and, you know, it would really give people an, an idea of what was to come with the, the other four batches. So I, I, I tend to prefer the first one to the second one, but I haven't tasted actually the, the final, you know, in the no. bottle, uh, of, of any of these. <laughs> gotcha. So, so when you're tasting this, what do you get from it? Like what do you, when you're smelling this, what's, uh, what, what's the, what's the blender get from this on the nose? Sweet, warm, nutty. I, I get some, um, kind of herbal notes. It definitely some, um, kind of sweet fruit, not so much like ripe fruit, but there is some red fruit in there on the nose, some orange, orange peel. Um, vanilla bean and, and caramel. There's also a hint of that kind of like toasted oak. Mm-hmm. See, I'm not picking up the oak. I'm d- I'm picking up toasted coconut in here more than I am the oak flavor, which I think there's probably some uh, uh-huh. some bleed in, you know, between did, the two, right? So, did you go outside today and put suntan lotion on, Cam? Ooh, it could have been whatever. Could, 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 could have been my SPF twenty. Yeah, uh-huh. been. So, what about on the what about on the palate? What do you uh, what's coming through for you? I love the palate on this. It's to me, it, the the mouth feel is just as important as the actual flavors. So, it's got this nice, long, lingering, warm, sweet finish. It's got a little bit of a floral note there in the middle of the palate. Mm. It's not a it's not a strong um, flavor in the middle of the experience. It's it's like you get the the spice up front. You get some of that lingering kind of floral herbal um, fruit situation and then it ends nice and sweet and creamy Mm -hmm. very balanced for sure so i'm not going to go down this road because i know you don't want to and it's not proper but i'm going to make a couple of comments so there's speculation of where it was sourced at Uh, i'll I'll leave it at that um 
and, and not specific to Sweeten's Cove, but just in general. And and do you, are there ever clients that come to you and it's like, hey, so you know, I, I want to blend something. Hey, birdies and bourbon, we're ready to blend, and and we bought these barrels, and we can't wait for this to happen, right? And we've we've made our whatever our little investment was. And it's like, okay, we're ready to go. Uh, here, here's the barrels, sending you the samples. And is it ever, uh, I'm not the right person for your brand? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like I'm well, not, I'm not touching quality, this one. You gotta be thinking, right? You gotta be <laughs> no, thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's the best thing about, um, well, cause it's know, your being, brand also. being out on my own. Yeah. I, I have the opportunity to be, be picky if I'm going to be associated with, with these different, um, labels, then I, I want them to be good. And luckily, you know, Sweetens is, is uh, really focused on, on elevating the, the whole category of Tennessee produced mm-hmm. spirit. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It turned out really well for sure. Um, hey, so Marianne, let me ask, um, so you, you, you had this, this track record where you had, you were an intern and Cal will not promote me. I'm still the intern in this. Show, he's, right? still the intern. <laughs> he's still the intern. <laughs> if he's not careful, so, he won't be the intern for long. That's true. That's true. But, um, you had, you know, you started at Brown Foreman as an intern. And then from, from what I understand through just, you know, the outlets that we were kind of doing some research on you and you can please, you know, the story better than anybody, but, um, you, uh, you started there and you started doing t- tastings and and you were doing well in those tastings and kind of a highlight in terms of wow this this person's got a good palate you know let's keep keep pushing them in terms of training and, and you know see how far they can go and you know that kind of thing can you elaborate kind of on how that went it was really interesting so i, I started as a a little process research engineer um, intern, and you know they're always looking for people to participate in these sensory panels. So it wasn't like, you know, they they picked me out of a, a out of a crowd and they're like, you 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 are the chosen one. Right, right. Um, basically, they were like, we'll give you money, please come taste some <laughs> things. So you know, you go through this very kind of simplified. Um, qualification round to see if you you have a good enough palate to to be on this kind of like very low level kind of consumer replicating um sensory panel which is where they do you know all of the triangle all of the triangle tests Mm -hmm. um but essentially it's just like do you know the difference between salty sweet bitter and sour um can you taste this in water can you taste this in alcohol which is a little more difficult um how many of all of these aromas can you identify and and uh, just make sure that your palate and that your nose work pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they're like, okay, great. Off you go. Taste right. some things. <laughs> right. And I, I started um, getting what they call the top tongue award. Um, so at different months, you know, they, they monitor your success across the, the different panels that you do. And, you know, I, I was one floor away so there was the, the third floor and the fifth floor. So the engineers are on the third floor and the um, product development, the sensory group are on the fifth floor. And so, you know, I was uh, right there ready to do tastings whenever they set them up. <laughs> and like, maybe just like sheer volume um, helped me to get the, the top tongue award. But um, after a while, you know, they, they started saying, okay, she's, she's, pretty good. We can't fool her with these um, kind of standard um, base level tastings anymore. We think we want to take her up to the expert panel, which is where you start doing white dog and aged product looking for defects. Um, so that was another round of, of um, training and qualification. And then eventually, you know, they, they gave me some production experience. I was working on the bottling lines. And, and when I came back, I guess I had shown enough uh, <laughs> willpower uh, to work, you know, all three different shifts over there at the bottling facility. It's hot. It's loud. You know, these are kind of rough um, union uh, type folks over there. And, and I had no management experience, but, but managed to, <laughs> to stay afloat and, and, um, make some friends along the way. And, and when I got back to my cushy R and D job, they're like, all right, Marianne, we, we see you got some skills. You're, you're, um, not, uh, not shy from working hard. How would you feel about this new opportunity? Essentially my, I, I say my boss's boss's boss, cause he was well up the chain from me, just mm-hmm. walked up to me. I was out in the pilot plant, um, looking at some different equipment, uh, look, writing down the, 
the asset numbers, getting ready for an, an internal audit. And he's like, Hey, Marianne, what are you up to? I was like, oh, I'm just doing this thing. And he said, well, come to my office in 15 minutes. And essentially at the, the, the end of it, um, I was biting my nails because I didn't know what in the world this guy that was so important wanted to talk to me about. Mm -hmm. And I sit down in his office across from him and he says, Hey, great to see you. How, uh, how would you like to be the next Woodford Reserve master distiller? Oh, well, like, that, it would what? suck. It would suck. <laughs> I was like, Ow. huh? <laughs> Me? <Yeah. laughs> You're the right person? <laughs> yeah, wow. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that job. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Well, that's how it all started. Yeah. <laughs> so did you, um, growing up, I mean, you know, just the, the, the whole palette development and obviously they saw that recognition of, wow, you're, you're scoring high. And did, did you have any idea that, I mean, obviously you did probably from the test results of when you were doing those stuff. Did you have any idea that you had those skills going into that internship? No, no, not at all. I guess I, I knew that I had a pretty good sense of smell. I just didn't realize how that translates into your sense of taste. Mm, okay. you're actually, your sense of smell is three fifths of, of your ability to taste. Okay. Well, if you lose, if you can't smell, you can't taste. So that's right. that's really the the whole thing, <laughs> right? Um, and and we've asked this. Uh, Cal and I have talked about this off. You know, we talk about it all the time. But I, I come from coming from the wine side first. Cal comes from more of the bourbon side first. So just when you're developing your palate and you're you know learning how to taste and with wine or bourbon or whatever it might be. Do you find yourself doing that more and more throughout the, the your day now, not just in specialized when you're trying to do it? Do you have the power and you're like, Oh, I'm tasting these and foods. And do you enjoy food better? Do you enjoy those types of things better? Um, do you find that? I definitely find that when I'm, when I'm trying something, a new dish or a new spirit, I, 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 I'm really trying to be thoughtful about it. I want to take in the flavors and I want to, um, you know, evaluate it a little bit. If I'm just out, you know, with a beer and, you know, at a okay. barbecue or something yeah. that, yeah. you know, these are all pretty familiar flavors and I'm just here to hang out. I, sure. I, uh, I'm not looking at it. So, so technically, um, but any, anytime I get the chance to try something new, I'm, I'm really, um, processing it and, and trying to, um, uh, break it down a little bit. And do you drink coffee? I do drink coffee. Well, how do you take your coffee in the morning? Mm -hmm. So it, it's interesting. My, my ex w was, is a, a coffee roaster. So I learned a ton See. about different regions and, and, you know, how the, the roasting affects the flavors that you get. And that was one thing that, that kind of changed how I felt about the um, charring of a barrel because mm -hmm. if you if you roast a coffee bean too heavily you lose all the beautiful nuance of the flavor so I kind of felt like that was maybe the same with the barrel if you char it too much then you're losing the terroir and the interesting notes from the the um, secondary you know um, uh, toasting uh, benefits so mm -hmm. Yeah, I I drink I drink coffee with uh, almond milk in it these days. But you know when I had access to the really great stuff because I'm typically doing just like yeah. Starbucks pods and a Keurig. All right, yeah, I got you. <laughs> but I when I have you. really good stuff, I'll, I'll drink it. I'll drink it. You know, just just black. Cool. Yeah, yeah. the the parallels and Dan loves to hit on that one. But the parallels between. Uh, coffee and, you know, be it wine, spirits, however you want to frame it up. I mean, the, the similarities are just so, uh, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's the, the, all you're missing is the alcohol, right? I mean, in, I in, in you. what you're taking, so not, not in taste, but yeah, and just the, uh, uh, the, the process of tasting. Um, speaking of, uh, Dan is always asking me a question. Oh, boy. And, and I, I don't have a good answer. And oh, you're boy, in, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> So, you know, if you think about wine and think about the point system, mm -hmm. right? So, so there's a rating and, uh, you know, the best answer I, I, the, the, when we're having, you know, just internal conversations, it's, well, you know, there, there are, you know, San Francisco, you know, I mean, there's, there's different, uh, events where they're tasting and they're awarding, you know, silver, mm -hmm. uh, gold, uh, you know, they, they, and they're, they're labeling stuff, but when or why, why don't we and when do we get to a point system for uh, spirits? There have been um, folks that, that have started to do that. I, I'm definitely aware of some um, different 
what do I want to call it? reviewers that that have adopted a point system very similar to that of wine because they're trying to use you know a, a an understandable common language you know it's a it's a hundred point scale it's just what it is right. um, so I, I'm I'm aware that there there are a few reviewers who are doing that with whiskey and I imagine I actually don't know because. Um, I, I didn't get to the point of, of submitting the gin that I made at, at Castle and Key to any of those types of venues, but I, I'm assuming there's the same thing. You know, there's definitely the metals like you're talking about, right. but I'm assuming there's there's um, more independent reviewers that that would have a, a point scale for the the gin as well. Yep, yep. I definitely think it's going to more and more. You're going to see probably more of that as it to, mm-hmm. continues to develop, et cetera. Yeah. It's interesting because it, you know, it feels very subjective, but in, in, in a lot of times they'll be like, yeah, so-and-so of uh, this whiskey guide gave me a, a 94 points, which is, you know, liquid gold is what they, they called it in this, yep. this one example. Yep. Um, but it, it's just, you know, you, you have to do your research on these particular tasters. Are, are your palates aligned? Are you going to mm-hmm. feel the same way about the juice when, when you get it? You know, you just have to do it. It's a little bit of trial and error, whether you, you actually Actually agree because um, I, I don't think it's gotten to the point where there's like a standardized um, yeah there's not a universal is, code or no. a universal language it's going to say okay here's what we're going to go by like with wine uh-huh. and and it's you know and I don't yeah I was kind of tying it back to well it's because of the different uh, you know uh, uh, grain percentages that go in and things are so varied and scaled I mean I don't know how you would really you can compare one to the other but for the point system to be leveraged I, I don't know how you would actually get there. I mean, is it is it good or bad? I mean, I think if you mm-hmm. if you're drinking enough, I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> but, if, but if you're drinking enough, you kind of know what you like. And and yeah, I guess my you know my take on it is, well, drink what you like. It doesn't matter who else likes it because it's uh, doesn't matter how much it costs. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what's in it. If you like it, you like it, and you should drink it and share it. And it doesn't mean that everybody else is going to like it. They can just regift it to somebody else. <laughs> it's, uh, the the bur- it's the you know, the the, hey, the, the whiskey world that keeps on giving you know so, <laughs> yeah, yeah just I, can it and push it on <laughs> I've uh, I've done a little bit of that judging for for spirit competitions and in t- typically what it comes down to me, I try to put my own, you know, flavor preferences aside and just look at the quality of the production of the spirit itself. Is this, you know, are they using good ingredients? Can you tell that they knew that what they were doing in the actual distillation? Um, is it, it got some good complexity to it? Or if it's simple, you know, can, can we tell that that was their approach? You know, if it's, if it's just good, clean, easy bourbon, that's fantastic. You know, it, it deserves as high marks as something that's, you know, double barrel, and whatever fancy yeast strain and um i think my, in my my opinion what are your uh that you've hinted i don't know if you've hinted i, I took them as hints but what are your flavor preferences i have a sweet tooth so i i tend mm-hmm. to lean toward um a robust kind of sweet dominant profiles um you know, there's, there's a nice, you know, clean, spicy rye whiskey or something like that. Some, sometimes is, is really nice. I, I like to mix it up. I can appreciate all, all flavor profiles. It's just, you know, when I'm sitting down and, and to pick up a bourbon, just to sip on, typically it's, it, it airs on the side of, uh, of sweetness. Good. That's good. Uh, well, so I know we've kept you for a while. I don't want to wrap up just yet, but, uh, I do have another, so I, I'm, I like to, uh, I'm a, I'm a amateur blender myself. Um, and, and I'm blending with stuff that I'm buying off the shelf. Right. Uh, <laughs> one, one of, one of my favorites is, uh, old granddad 114 and mellow corn. Uh, I like to call that mellow granddad. So, you know, the mellow corn, it's just super, super sweet, right? It's, uh, it's candy corn all the way. And then the old granddad, 114, is just hot as hell. You know, it's, uh, you, you know your nose hairs curl up on that one. But 50-50 on that one's good. I'm um, doing some four grain stuff that I'm experimenting with. So you get to do it. I'm doing it in the, the I mean, <laughs> below the minor leagues. You're doing the big league stuff. But do you have anything uh, that maybe people could pick up off the shelf that, uh, that they would blend that? Uh, that that turns out to be a better product than uh, just the bottles alone. 
That's a tough one. That's a tough one to answer. Um, no, it, right it, it, you, know, you don't have to answer. Yeah, you don't have to answer. Yeah, no, no worries. I know. I mean, you're you're doing it the you're you're doing it the uh, the professional way. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it the hillbilly East Tennessee way, right? So. There you go. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's a tough one, Cal. That's a tough one, buddy. You probably yeah, should have no, no, no. that one. <laughs> hey, un, un, hey, no, 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 wor- no worries. And no, there's there's no good answers or bad answers. There's just uh, you know, it's just, just a question. Yeah. Yeah, typically, you know, when I'm I'm uh, picking up a bottle, I I have tried a little bit of mixing, you know, spirits together, but but typically I'm I'm not mixing uh, bourbon with bourbon. I'm mixing bourbon and and something else, like mm-hmm. yeah, for a cocktail or yeah. gin or you know yeah. some, something totally off the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. So uh, so Marianne, um, so what? Uh, so you've got a bunch of projects you're working on. And, uh, so we're going to see, um, some stuff coming out of the winery soon. You got, uh, you may potentially a couple of things coming out of there and then a lot of projects you're, you're excited about. So when is the first one you think is going to hit the market this year? Well, there's the next round of, of Sweetens Cove, which will release next year. I'm not exactly sure. Probably, okay. you know, late spring, something like that. Just depends on how this, ex- all this experimentation oh. goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure about uh, how product development is going to go, you know, at the winery. I've got all these ideas. And, and like I told you, I'm, I'm trying to make it more complicated than it really needs to be. <laughs> so I'm like, I want to order all of these interesting barrels so we can try and see what it does to the flavor. So, you know, something that could be ready in, in a few days, I'm going to uh, make it wait a few months. Um, but, you know, potentially we could have some some hoops spirits um, this year. We'll, we'll just see how that goes. The other projects that I'm I'm working on are, are a little more long term. Mm-hmm. Um, you may see some interesting announcement from me in the next month. Cool. Uh, just keep an eye open for that one. Um, I'm I'm excited about you know the the potential to do something that I I believe is really different, and I haven't I haven't actually seen anybody um, approach uh, bourbon in in this way. So. Um, just a little, nice. another little teaser. I'm just full of teasers for That's you guys. That's good. Well, you got a lot of things going on. That's exciting. That's fun. And you seem to really enjoy kind of being on the innovative side of things, always curious, right? Um, so that's fun. Yeah, absolutely. Cal's really enjoying that Sweden's Cove. I'll tell you what, it's better than my last round of golf up there. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, oh, boy. And it had not, not the course. I'm talking about me personally. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, fantastic. Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, I got to get the 103. Do, what's the third, uh, what's the third round coming out at? So this one's They're 101. They're supposed to let me know. Yeah. I, oh, I don't so you know, don't know that, that one's been dumped yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. But you've already tasted and it's bland. You, you've already got everything ready, right? The barrels are. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All the barrels are already assigned to their batches. So whenever they're ready to dump them, they'll, they'll be. I think Steve go. Harvey would be a fan of this one, by the way. I watched oh, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Oh my gosh. How, how <laughs> was the Steve Harvey show? We did, we, we did uh, take a look at that and uh, that, that's gotta be interesting. It was least. interesting. It was interesting. I've never been um, to a big network like that. Never, ever been through that process before. But essentially, you know, they, they had an idea of what they wanted to to see in the segment. They had It was all live filmed. Um, so, and, and my job was to like stick to the script and keep Steve on, <laughs> on track. And, and that just didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> He's a character. Isn't he? I, I, I don't know that he ever stays on script, right? So. No. <laughs> yeah. His job is to make it entertaining. So, right. you know, he, <laughs> he pulled some things out of me and I, you know, I was just there along for the ride. Yeah. I bet that was a lot of fun. Where was that tape? Was that New York or Chicago? Chicago. Or Chicago? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, he's a funny guy. We saw that. That was good. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I'm having a lot of fun up there. <laughs> yeah, and you taped sure. the, the TED Talk. Uh, was that last year or this year? You taped the TED that Talk. That was last year. Uh-huh. That was good, too. We enjoyed that one, too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you used that one for the intro. I was like, oh, that sounds familiar. Yes, we <laughs> did. We're wondering if you would pick up on where it came from. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, spent, I spent so so long preparing for that. I, I, um, I just felt like there was so much more pressure than any other presentation that I had done. I'm like, this is a Ted talk. This is important. It's Mm -hmm. 10 minutes, but who knows? Like a lot of people are going to see this. It's a big deal. Um, so I just, you know, worried and worried about it. It's like, I only get 10 minutes. So it has to be like every word counts. 
Because usually, you know, if I have an hour to present to a group, I can just meander around and goof off and, and make it entertaining. It doesn't have to be inspiring and impactful every every moment. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm really proud of, uh, of how that, that all came together and that yeah. I even had the opportunity. Yeah, that was great. No, that was great. We enjoyed that. Yeah, absolutely. You did a great yeah, job. Yeah, and it, you did a fantastic job. And if you know, for those listening and or watching, if you haven't had a chance to uh, to to watch uh, Marianne and her TED talk, uh, it, it's better than any message we'll deliver on this show for sure. <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, I mean, what what an awesome story, right? I mean, from uh, from where you started. Uh, what you went through, you know, as you can get to it in ten minutes, and then you know, and, and then and now you know, having the ability to do uh, what you want to do and how you want to do it. I mean, that's uh, what more could you say? I mean, that that's so impactful, right? I mean, it's got to it's got to be fun waking up in the morning. Absolutely, yeah. the The world is uh, is your oyster if you, you know, <laughs> are brave enough to go out there and 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 uh, and you know follow your dreams. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Cal, um, I think you probably need to wrap up. I think we just kept her long enough. Uh, you know, where, where they can, where they can find her, et cetera. Uh, yeah, Marianne, we'll let you share. Uh, where can people find you? You shared once, but why not share again? <laughs> I think I've shared the website twice. So MarianneEves.com is the website. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. I, I have a Twitter out there, but I haven't used it in probably uh, half a decade. So <laughs> uh, you're not going to find anything interesting for me on Twitter. But Marianne BMD, Bourbon Master Distiller on Instagram and Facebook. Well, if you do happen on your Twitter, we're not stalkers. We were just trying to get in touch with you. So don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't get freaked out. I, I haven't opened it in forever. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep it that way. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, hey, thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. And uh, maybe with uh, release number two, let's get back on and uh, have a drink. That sounds great. Thank yeah. you, guys.